<sighs> yes, yes, people. What's going on? Welcome back to the Backwire Channel TV. This is the Chelsea instant reaction. Full time whistles just blown at Stamford Bridge a few minutes ago. 3 2 Chelsea. Um, Trying to restrain from full rant mode, to be honest. But at the same time, there's a lot that needs to be said about tonight. And a lot of it is obviously very, very bad. And it's in the it's in the title. How has a howler, Eddie Howler, and it is that tonight. It's a it's an absolute disaster class from Eddie Howe. If I'm being perfect honest with you, and this isn't an Eddie Howe out video. It's nothing like that. You know, I back Eddie Howe. I, I said more than enough credit in the bank after what he's done last season. It's none of that. It's just my thoughts on tonight's game. That's what the whole point is. It's a match reaction. I reacted to the match I've just saw. And uh, it was absolutely diabolical. It really is. I think 3-2, in essence, scoring two goals at Sanford Bridge might look better than it is. But at the, at the time, it doesn't. Chelsea are a bottom-half team. Saying that, they're only one point away from us now. In the, in the 11th, and we're in 10th, we missed a glorious opportunity the night to go back up to 7th, I think it was, right in the European mix. We've messed that up big time tonight. We messed everything up tonight. The tactics were completely wrong. By Eddie Howe, and that is why I am saying he had an absolute howler. He's had a howler tonight because we have completely played into Chelsea's hands. Speaking of Chelsea fans, in the build-up of this game, you know, Matisse, the YouTuber, Louis Beneventi, Chelsea Echo, a few of us, they're all saying, oh, I'm not looking forward to this. You know, Newcastle are going to come to town. They're going to have a really good time. You know, they're going to win at the bridge for the first time since 2011-2012 season. Papi Sissi's wonder strike, you know, we've got a shocking record at Chelsea. That's because Chelsea used to be good. This season, they have been absolutely awful. Bottom half team, as I've said, and loads of other bottom half teams have beat Chelsea this year by playing a low block, by playing like Newcastle did at home to Wolves last week. And last week against Wolves at home, we said, wow, that's us back now. That's us. That's, that's Newcastle back. The identity's back. Intensity's back, the press, everything's back, scoring goals, clean sheets, we're back. This is last year's Newcastle all over again. Eddie Howe, get in. No, tonight completely blew it. Why the hell didn't we just stick with the same game plan that worked so well against Wolves in one of our best wins in so many months? For such a long time, we had the best game, the best win against Wolves, and we ripped up that game plan that worked so well against the team that you need to play that game plan against. Play the low block against Chelsea. Let them have the ball. They'll do now with it. They will do now with it. Those goals they scored tonight wouldn't have happened if you just sit back, play the low block, hit them on the counter, hit them on the break. That's what we do best anyways. Especially when you've got Alan Ron and Murphy on the wings. Pace. Obviously, you'll get into things that happen during the game. Gordon has to go off. Obviously, we'll touch on that. But I'm just going to say that the tactics were just so crap tonight. And again, many people criticised Eddie Howe for this for not having a plan B. And he didn't tonight. And he didn't really have a plan A. I don't know what that was because it was wrong, completely wrong. Just have that low block. Let Chelsea, let the Stamford Bridge crowd get toxic like it has been in all the other games. They don't want Pochettino there. They don't want half the players that they've got there. They don't want the owner there. Oh, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just pass our ball around, do that with it. They'll hit us on the break with your Palmas and then Mudrick of all people and I'll pace. Just giving them the opportunity, giving them the opportunity, get playing directly into their hands. Honestly, I couldn't believe... Even on Sky Sports, you know, they were saying, like, oh, what on Newcastle? Why aren't they just playing the low block? Why aren't they... Ian Wright was like, I'm so confused. Newcastle, their, their system, their everything, suits coming here to hit them on the break and cause them problems. We were just passing it around. Why were we happy to have the ball and we never looked in threat of doing anything with it? Chelsea are so crap, man. Chelsea are a really, really bad team. We know that. They're 11th in the league. Again, I know only one point behind us now. But they're terrible, man. They're really bad. And we made them look like prime 2000s Jose Mourinho Chelsea. I mean, 2004, 2006 Chelsea. I was expecting Didier Drogba and Orion Robin to come off the bench at one point because I was thinking, what's going on here? And I think half of Stamford Bridge were scratching their eyes thinking, is this real? <laughs> what's going on? Honestly, the way we have just gifted them that, that win tonight, gifted them it. We've still scored two goals and lost because somehow we managed to give them three. Hey, my days, man, I'm so wound up tonight with how bad we played. Performance-wise, all round, crap, really, really bad. But just playing it in their hands, it's a howler from Eddie Howe and the staff. It really is. It's it's so, 
so disappointing because I just think the, the the tactics tonight and the idea we had from the off was just shite. It just didn't work. And then don't change it. Chelsea were there for the taking, man. We've seen them lose to so many teams this season, so many teams that are in the bottom half, just like they are. And we've just, we just made it so easy for them, rolled over. Yeah, it's, it's just really annoying that we've missed that opportunity again to get back in the seventh, that being that European mix. And we're not entirely out of it. Our fixtures are looking good for the rest of the season, really. I think Spurs at home is one of the hardest ones. Um, but tonight was just such an opportunity to go to Stamford Bridge, right the wrongs of that horrible record we've got there. One win in 29. One win in the Premier League era at Stamford Bridge. And we'll go there and play like that. And Isaac, great finish. 1-1 one, one half time, you think, right, come out second half, boss this game, get, get the job done, get three points. <sighs> terrible. Absolutely terrible. Shout out to Andrew for the super chat. Uh, sorry, for the super chat. He says he's done with Sean Longstaff. I've been done with Sean Longstaff for a while. I think people are finally catching on. I've been seeing him for ages and people were saying I was negative and all that. It's just, it's not being negative. Do you think I don't want a Geordie lad to be the best player on the pitch? Do you know what I mean? I'm glad that, you know, Eddie Anderson's coming off the bench and stuff and how well uh, Louis miley has been this season. Louis Miley's already better than Sean Longstaff. And Sean Longstaff's been in the game for several years now. He's in his late 20s now. Miley's 17 and he's already better than Longstaff in his first few months. Longstaff is crap, man. I've always said it. Just because he, he had a good spell last year where he scored fair play, well done, scored some important goals and that Carabao Cup run and that. But no, he's just he's just hopeless. He's just, he's hopeless. It's pointless being there. You may as well play with 10 men. You may as well play with 10 men. The amount of times he gives the ball away, he's so clumsy. Does he get forward? No, not enough. Does he pass, make the right passes? No. Does he get stuck in? Not really. He just runs about, tries to make yourself look busy. Do you know what I mean? He's like that crap employee you work with that just gets away with murder when they're never chipping in with anything. He's the one there in Tesco that's just like someone spilled something and he's off the other rail doing something else, stopping up the cereal when he should be cleaning up the orange juice that's spilled. But he's looking busy. He's always looking busy. Busy, busy long staff. Crappy, crappy long staff. He's, he's chitty, chitty, crappy, crappy long staff, man. I've had enough of him. Just like Andrew there, I've had enough of him, man. Long staff is not good enough. If we have got serious aspirations, like the owners say, about improving and becoming one of the best teams and getting solidified in your top fours and all that, Longstaff has to go. Well, he doesn't have to go. He can stay here as the squad player if he wants. He can play Carabao Cup games away to Peterborough if he wants. But he's not playing champ, champ. He's not playing Champions League, definitely not. He's not playing Premier League games. He's not playing Chelsea's away and City's at home and whoever else. He's not. He's not good enough. He isn't good enough anymore to be starting for Newcastle. I'll tell you what. In that bottom half, how many teams does Sean Longstaff? Because you didn't get any, team, any teams in the top ten in the Premier League. So how many teams does Sean Longstaff get into in the Premier League? I'll sit and wait because I, I, I kind of see Bailey, Everton maybe at a push. You know, Forest, probably not. I, I, who does he get into? So he kind of, I know we've got injuries and everything. Maybe sitting on the bench. Joe White comes on at the end. Um, Anderson as well. But nah, man, you need uh, you need changes. Um, and Sean Longstaff's one of them ones. He's got to be massively upgraded in the summer. Um, he's not good enough. He's had patches. But today, in this season, to be fair, he looks back to the old Longstaff, Brucey Longstaff. So, and trust I didn't take pride in saying that. I, I, I hate saying that. I want him to do well. But I, I kind of sit here and be like, mm, give the lad of a chance because he's from Shields. Play Sam Fender if you want to play someone from Shields. Can't be much worse than fucking Longstaff. But I'll tell you what has to be mentioned tonight as well. And I see all the comments flooding in. There is over 600 people watching. So please do just quickly hit the thumbs up button and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Botman. Has to take a lot of stick tonight. Sven Botman. Sven Boomsong. Sven Boomsong. What the hell has happened to Sven Botman? He, uh, you can tell he's still carrying a knot. He hasn't got over his injury. They might need further treatment on it. But my God, this bloke is looking absolutely out of his depth. He, Botman was like, when he signed it, was like, wow, what a player I've got in my hands. Yeah, one of the best defenders in the league. Superstar, young superstar as well. 30 million Dutch, you think, oh, what a talent. And no doubt, you know, surely you hope he recovers that form and gets on from uh, his issues. But I tell you what, man, <laughs> what's happened to the bloke? That first goal is pathetic. That clearance is abysmal. And I don't know why or how Debravka isn't shouting. And if he is, then again, Botman 
takes more responsibility for not letting it go because just just let Debravka get it. There's no one around. Just let Debravka pick up the ball. It's the weakest, crappest clearance you'll ever see in your life. Straight to Palmer, who hits it. Jackson, cute finish. But again, what kind of a clearance is that? And he's just caught out. Every week he's caught out now. Every week he's miles away from everyone. You must be loving it as a forward now, coming up against Botman, which nobody said last season. But this year, you just constantly know you're going to get him behind. You're going to get him behind. You're going to have your chance. He's going to be tailing you. You're going to be nowhere near you. You're going to be through on goal. He just looks a bit weak now. He looks clumsy. That's where the Boom Song reference comes from. Not just because it sounds good and it sounds funny because Boom Song, Botman, it's quite similar. It's quite fucking similar to watch as well. He's looking so clumsy. He's looking so clumsy. Sven Bramble, someone says there. Do you know what I mean? From a Rolls Royce to a tractor, says Will. No doubt about it. From a Rolls Royce to a Rover. Rover 25. MG. <sighs> Sven Botman. Terrible tonight. Terrible, shocking goal to concede. After what was a okay start from Newcastle as well. It was an okay start. We were on the ball, um, and I've got to say, you know, down that right hand side, they were having a lot of joy. Gusto was having our life. Gusto was just he's causing all sorts of problems. Cooking, he was Gusto. Gusto, I'll go call him tonight. Gusto, he was having a treat down that right hand side. Cooking, and Gordon wasn't tracking back. Gordon was getting found out, but obviously it looked like Gordon from that early injury was continuing to struggle. And uh, later on, had to go off because shout out Joe for that Snapchat. Snapchat, what am I talking about? I'm all over the place. I'm so fucking angry after that night. Super chat from Joe. I'll get into that in just a minute. Uh, but I, Gordon, obviously had to come off injured. <laughs> Another comical scene by the physio department. The test in Gordon's knee. He's came down. He's like, I need to go off. The physio comes on. He's like, now nah, we'll have a look at this. You sit back, son. Gordon sits back. Three, two, one. Puts his knee back. And Gordon's like, whoa, what are you doing? Now he pops his knee off. Knee ligament damage. That could be serious. That could be long term. Gordon should go off anyways. And to be fair, I do think it is Gordon that signals to stay on. He gives a thumbs up saying he's okay. How should bring him off? But if Gordon saying he wants to stay on, but you could see he wasn't his usual self. You could see he didn't have that electrifying pace and he took that knock early on. He never really recovered from it. Uh, he had to swap flanks with Miggy because Gusto was having all that joy down that side. He wasn't coming back. He was getting on the ball, doing now with it. I don't know if he was trying a bit too hard tonight, Anthony Gordon, because Gareth Southgate was in attendance. I thought maybe he was trying a bit too hard to impress, but I tell you what, uh, you've got to feel sorry for the bloke. You know, it's, it's so unlucky that just days before the international squads get announced, he gets this injury, and well, hopefully it's not too serious, but it's not looking good for him at all for these friendlies. Let's hope we can come back and maybe still get on the plane for the Euros, but... Um, before the injury he didn't know wasn't good, but obviously what he's done throughout the season should carry more weight than that just for an eighth for Southgate. But I, Anthony Gordon, this is why you never come out and put things out into the world for me. Like, because he <laughs> he had an interview on the weekend saying the medical staff never see me. I'm never injured. I'm always available. That's who I am. A couple of days later, <laughs> just sums up our season that, doesn't it? A couple of days later, goes off injured. Yeah, you've got to laugh, haven't you? It's just unreal, totally bizarre. Of course, he goes off injured after saying that in an interview um, in front of Southgate. Oh. Got to feel sorry for him. Um, and then the other England player that's looking to impress is Cole Palmer, and he, he did that, didn't he? He was unreal tonight for them. But again, we made, we made him unreal. We made it too easy for him, sitting him off, letting him shoot, shoot, shoot all, all non-stop. Nobody closing him down, nobody getting tight, nobody getting stuck in, nobody... You want to make him scared to get on the ball. He had all the time in the world at Stamford Bridge tonight, Cole Palmer. He is a he is a real good player, but uh, he would have impressed Southgate. Gordon obviously goes off injured. Feel for him. Joe says, remember when everyone was said that everyone was because of congested fixtures? We're playing worse with more prep time. What's going on? Well, we can't use the congested fixtures anymore. We've had nine days since that Wolves win to prepare for this game. Nine days. And uh this is what we do with it. Looked like we had fucking nine seconds to prepare for this. Because I, I would have preferred nine seconds because then if we had just carried on from the Wolves thing and carried on the tactics and the game plan through there, as I said earlier, we would have had a much better result tonight. A much, much better result. But uh, no, we definitely can't use fixture congestion anymore. Ah, oh, where else then? Where else from tonight? Um, we'll quickly wrap up some of the notes that I had pointed out. So before this game, we we're thinking 
Newcastle have a good chance because of Chelsea's injuries. Apparently, Conor Gallagher was going to be out, uh, Cucurella and loads of other players, and most of them off it. Most of them started, and you've got to say the ones that made the difference was your Palmer and your Gusto, to be fair. Uh, Harvey Bones injured for Newcastle. Harvey Bones, not um, even on the bench for the two, and it's apparently it's a minor hamstring injury that he felt against Wolves, but... <laughs> Oh, not good. He's only just came back and Bones is out again already. Uh, spoke about the t- spoke about Sven Botman, aka Sven Boom Song. Spoke about the shot and goal, just not letting Debrafka collect it. Strange. Um, talked about Longstaff, Gordon's injury, and then Tino being the bright spark. Got to see Tino Livermento against his former side. He was one of the bright sparks tonight, especially the first hour. But again, I just think final. Final phase just wasn't good enough from anyone tonight, and that, that does include Tino. You know, he's very good at winning fouls, and the Chelsea players were hacking him down, but he was doing well uh, getting forward, squeezing in between players and, and tracking back as well. But again, I just thought tonight, for me, so many wasted crosses and getting in decent enough areas and then doing now with it. Corners as well, man. Why the fucking hell can we not beat the first man at the corner? It's the same with defending. We're so bad at defending corners. We're, we're so bad at uh, going, being attacking with them as well. Our oh, attack from corners, man, no matter who takes it. Trippier, Murphy, Gordon, Bruno. First man after first man. are trying to do some little little uh, short routine that just doesn't pay off. <sighs> Frustrating us out, man. And like, it's things that when you're away from home and I'll just make advantage of these free kicks in the final third. Corners, man. Just take advantage of them. Wasting. Wasting them over and over again. Got to go back to that uh, point as well about Isaac, by the way. The finish was spectacular from Isaac, to be fair. We quickly shifted his foot and curled it in. I've got to say, apart from that, I find him a bit uh, annoying because he just, I don't think he gets involved as much. And again, if, if we win that game and now we're going to draw, you think, oh, well, brilliant finish. I just want him to be a bit more involved. I feel like sometimes it's a bit... Bit of a passenger, but bloody hard when he can produce moments of magic like that. He can kind of get away with it. Now, with everyone, it's everyone else you target. And I thought, like I said, we've said long stuff, we've said Botman, we've said the whole defence, really, apart from Tino. Um, no one else doing anything of any note, to be honest with you. I thought it was a really bad performance from everyone. Five out of ten max for anybody tonight, for the majority. I just thought we looked so vulnerable at the back. I thought the defence just looked so vulnerable. Every time for me, that that uh, moment where Jackson's offside again, Botman nowhere to be seen. Crap judgment, crap reading of the game, slow. And we're just honestly, you just I, I was just crap myself every time Chelsea got into our half. You just think they're going to go ahead and get it. But Dan Byrne, to be fair, we've stated the defensive state of things, but Dan Byrne does clear one off the lane. That was good tracking back from when Raheem Sterling got through far too easily. So well done, Burn get one off the lane, but again, he was having a, a miserable night and getting totally outclassed for the majority of it. And then Mudrick. <laughs> Mudrick on the break scores and makes it 3 1. That bloke only scores against us. I was there at the bridge in the cup game when he scored, and then he scores again tonight. And I just knew it, you know, when he came off the bench, I was like, he's going to score because his pace and the way we're playing, he's going to get straight in behind and be one on one. Lo and behold, minutes later, he's one-on-one. It's predictable. It's too easy. It's embarrassing. It really was. Mudrick against scoring, man. I've never seen him look that cool in front of goals because he was playing against black and white. He loves it. It's the only time he scores, man. Mudrick against Newcastle. Jesus Christ. 3-1. And then Murphy with an unreal strike to make it 3-2. And even then, there's six minutes out of time, but you just think we're not going to get anything because we're not creating enough chances. Jacob Murphy with a thunder strike. Really good, strong finish. The lights just went off there. And the idea why we'll carry on. Um, I, Jacob Murphy, with an absolute pile drive at the back of the net. But again, yeah, it's 3 2, and you just know it. You just know it's going to be defeats, man. You just know it. Case Ball, thank you for the super chat. Absolute garbage. Bring in Josie now. Bring in Josie, he's saying. Well, there was a lot of rumors, wasn't there, because of uh, the owner. Meeting with Josie. We're well, not meeting, they're just kind of bumping into each other at the at the Grand Prix on the weekend there in Saudi Arabia. Josie was obviously in the crowd for the Anthony Joshua fight. And then he was at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix the next day. 
Um, and yeah, him in Newcastle's Yassiel Ramian, our chairman. We're having a quick chat and maybe more behind the scenes. Who knows? But he's calling for Josie at Newcastle. Interesting stuff. For me, like I said, I've, I've slated how tonight he's got it completely wrong. He's had an Eddie Howler. He's had a big time mistake. The game plan from Wolves should have carried on. You play that and it's simple. You play that, you take that into this game. The low ball against Chelsea, frustrate them, let them have the ball, they'll do now with it. Our pace will hit them on the break with your Almirons, your Gordons, or your Mayfew comes on, and Isaac. Bruno can pick them off, things like that. Do you know what I mean? So that's the way forward tonight. Um, Chelsea have lost so many games against poor sides who just have sat back, sat deep, done that. And we didn't. We went for it tonight like we were the home team. Remember, we beat Chelsea 4-1 back in November. Uh, they are really bad, and tonight we made them look really good. It's just fucking shit. Them. It's absolute shit. Tonight, like. Let's see what the rest of you are saying in the chat. There's been far too many comments for me to get through all the night, but we'll scroll up and pick out some of the best ones, some random ones. Uh, 800 people watching live, please do hit the like button or subscribe if you haven't already. Lots of people I see calling for how out in the chat. Remember, we'll be back tomorrow night live at 7 p.m. for our weekly podcast, so we'll touch on things like that more often. Um, right, let's go down. I've managed to get right the way back to the top of the comments. Wow. Sack him tonight. Says orange soda. Uh, Eddie Southgate. Sack him in the tunnel. I'm sick of this. Grateful for everything Eddie has done, but he needs to go. Um, Eddie how through in the game. Well, this is the thing for me tonight, and, and, uh, it, and I do agree with what Joe Linton saying there. You know, Un unacceptable loser mentality. Sometimes I just think. We give teams too much respect. Sometimes I think it gets into their heads a little bit. This is a this is a terrible Chelsea side that are bottom half and have been crap for ages now. And we've just gifted them the win tonight. They've played it in their hands and let them have it. We have let them have it. So I agree that Eddie's throwing the game. I agree that we haven't done enough and he hasn't done enough. And he's got things completely wrong. And again, the mentality is not right. The funny thing is that Eddie Howe has actually got a really good record at Stamford Bridge for Bournemouth. And then Newcastle, I think it's two draws. Or uh, whatever it was the season he came up and we played them. But obviously we drew there in the league last year. Last game of the season, 1-1. Drew there in the cup this year. Um, so I, some of that is true. Shot and defend yet again, inviting pressure. Says, hey, Dave comes in with that. I think it's time for some criticism towards how Botman nowhere near the same level as last year. Longstaff headless chicken, midfield bottles challenges. That was pissing me off tonight. I thought Willock was late. I thought Willock was bad tonight. Uh, I did. I thought there's times where he was late to getting the box to getting on the end of things, but again, in the middle of the part, I just don't think he wanted it. I don't think he wanted the ball enough. And I think we've said Longstaff already tonight. I think. Terrible, been terrible for a while. Running about, doing nout. Um, and obviously we've talked about Botman as well. Having an absolute disaster, as he's done for so long now. Since that injury, since he's came back, majority of this season, Sven Botman has been really hopeless. Like, it looks like a completely different player. Sven Boomsong, you know, we've said it. Sven Boomsong. Different bloke, different player. Don't know what's going on. I'd be tempted to stick the sellers back in. I'd got Kraft and Dummett at the back. Richie staying 10 more years. At this point, do you know what I mean? Just to remind, <laughs> just to remind you as well, that just came back into my head that we've got Man City next in the quarterfinal of the FA Cup on Saturday, and Chelsea, bottom half team, have just put three past us. So, God knows what Holland, De Bruyne, and all the rest of them will be able to do on Saturday. Fucking hell! Chilling's gone drastically wrong. Remember Brighton away, true, true. That was before the injury crisis, wasn't it? And that was one of the worst performances I've seen since uh, since the takeover. 
typical Newcastle performance from how away at home. Mm -mm -mm. Fed up, people are seeing fed up, fed up Longstaff as Shane. Longstaff a passenger again has to be dropped. Completely disagree, Tommy. Completely disagree. How's tactics and game planning? It was all wrong. All wrong. I've said it before already on this stream. You just play the low block against Chelsea and they win the game. That's what everybody does. So everybody who's got a win against Chelsea this season's done. If I can see that, why can't how many staff see that? If they're preparing for Chelsea, they look at the games that Chelsea have lost this season and won, to be fair, because then the ones they've won is the way we bastard played tonight. So if you had have played, you know, like the lower sides have played, Brentford and that at Stamford Bridge this year, sit back, sit back, whistle on the break, this on the break, that on the break. Let them have the ball, they'll do nothing with it. They kind of play with possession, they're crap in possession. They're good on the break as well, though. Oh, what we'll do then? We'll, we'll just let Chelsea play on the break. Mint. We'll let the Gusto and the fullbacks overlap. We'll let Palmer have the ball in around the box and no one pressure him. And that'll be an nice easy night for them. Crazy. Crazy tactics. Crazy game plan tonight. Uh, yeah, well, it has turned into a rant, to be fair, like, at times. Because yeah, you just look... You look at that, then you just think it's Chelsea, man. The the, the 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 really crap. You've got to be getting something against Chelsea tonight, man. Really bad side. You just play into the hands, man. Switched off after Chelsea's third goal, Michael says. Well, you missed Murphy's strike, so that was good, but I didn't blame you, mate. Didn't blame you at all. Long stuff, arm run and Murphy need to go. No vision. Taking Bruno off for fuck's sake. Long stuff and Bernie to stop starting, if not leave altogether. Not far off that, to be fair, like. It's been a while since I had his little confidence in our back lane. Very well put by Jimmy there, to be fair, from, from back to front. I said it as well, you know, every time Chelsea went forward, I was. Crap scared they were going to get a goal. Most of the time they did, to be honest. Uh, midfield was awful. I thought Willock was crap. Longstaff, as we've mentioned, really crap. Uh, Bruno, not much better, to be honest. Like, good good assist for, for Isaac. But again, I don't think he was as good as he can be. Far from it, to be fair. Um, and then going forward, everyone quiet, running about, doing now on the wings. And Isaac, like Jimmy said there, great finish, but did not else. Um. Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? Crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. How does Longstaff? How does Longstaff stay on the pitch? Never mean get on the pitch to start, and then he has that performance, and he stays on ahead of them. Probably taking Bruno off to try and avoid a yellow card. To be fair, but he's done so well at avoiding it for so long. You probably don't have to. Uh, we we'll look shattered. No idea why. Players had plenty of rest. They did. They had nine days of rest. So. <laughs> No excuses tonight. I, th I thought that as well, though. I thought as soon as Chelsea scored, I thought we just looked a bit dull, a bit lackluster, a bit lazy. Chelsea were just so there for the taking, man. And even at 1 1, you hear the crowd starting to turn a bit, and you can hear the away section more. And then again, you just see people strolling around and not doing enough. I mean, Aaron said they're spineless cowards strolling around. I didn't see the full time smile, and like, I turned that off. Uh, to get on here for you lot, but I, it's so true, man. It's so true, isn't it? Long stuff can't play again. So this is the thing for me, right? Man City on Saturday. <laughs> you don't even want to think about it, do you? But Miley's got to come back in. Miley's, like I said it earlier, Miley's already better than Longstaff in his first season. And Longstaff's been, how many seasons now? Six, seven years or something? Uh, so I, Miley's got to start for me. I think it's got to be Miley, Bruno... And Willock on Saturday and Longstaff should be dropped. But he seems to be the first bastard name on the team sheet. Like we just said there, he doesn't even get subbed off. Never mind taken off on him, like not starting. God almighty. How has reached his peak? Plan B, Mr. Franny players. Uh, man management atrocious is Daniel. <sighs> so Eddie Howe is getting lots of pelters tonight and... Yeah, you know I mean, I'm not here to try and see Eddie Howe out or have a go at him long term like that. 
But, uh, you know, there's times where it has to be said and people aren't going to hear this thing online when, oh, don't forget where we've come from and, oh, well, being negative. It's, you're not, like, you're just being realistic. Like, do you know what I mean? We've spent a few hundred million now. We deserve to be seeing better performances like that. And the game plan and tactics have been diabolical tonight. A few times this season, really. And again, it's not me saying that I want Eddie Howe. I don't want him out like a lot of people do in the comments. I don't, but... You know, he's showing weaknesses for me this season. He's got a lot of learn for next year. He really does. Um, and again, I'm just reacting to the game tonight, and I just think got it so wrong from the off and then throughout. Didn't learn, didn't change, and do now. <clears throat> right then, loads of comments. So let's keep going. Then. Some great comments in the chat, people. Nice one. Uh... Pathetic team beaten by a piss poor team. Hopeless how players have run out of excuses. Well, we can't have excuses anymore because I was always here saying, oh, it's all right. You know I mean, we've had Champions League. We've had an injury crisis. Come on, people. You know, just settle down a bit. Give, Take it easy. They don't deserve this criticism. Well, well, now they do, to be fair. Now they do deserve it because there isn't any excuses anymore, is there? There isn't. We've just had nine days rest from our best performance of the season, well, one of the best performances, in that 3-0 win over Wolves. We're saying we're back, the intensity's back, state of play is back. But what we're back to now? Because like, I don't see an injury crisis anymore. Yes, Gordon went off. That team that's out there is good enough to beat that team that Chelsea have been putting out all season. That's crap as well. This team from, uh, from Chelsea, you know, they've been beaten many times this year from teams in the bottom half. And we go there and play them like it's fucking prime mid-2000s Josie Chelsea. Giving them far too much respect. Playing it in their hands. And uh, there isn't any excuses anymore. The, you know, they the kind of say we're tired or we're this or we're that or there's too many games. There's, no. We're March now. There's 10 games left of this Premier League season. And tonight was a big chance missed to get back up to seventh and try and really solidify a European spot for me. Um, and it's not over. It's very tight in that bracket of teams. But Chelsea now are slating them. They've been bottom off all season. Right, one point off us. We lose against our next game. I can't remember who it is. I'm just thinking, the, try, trying not to think about City in the FA Cup on Saturday. Uh, Chelsea win their game, whoever they've got. And then there you go. There you go. Ah, I very much agree with that, Matthew. I really do. I think major overhaul need this this summer. We're going to touch on the PSR rules that have changed uh, today that are expected to come in this summer and what that means in the transfer window. We'll talk about that on tomorrow night's podcast, Tuesday, 7pm live, as always, because we need to sort it out this summer. Big changes are needed. I'm talking major, major overhaul this summer because being a long staff can stay for me if the squad players. I, I barely want to see them come off the bench. They can play in the FA Cup against your Maidstones, right? Against your, your fucking Coventry's and that. Uh, yeah, whatever. Sunderland, easy. I don't want to see them playing week in, week out. I can't see them playing at Stamford Bridge. I can't see them playing at home to Arsenal, to Liverpool, to Manchester City. I can't. So we do seriously need to upgrade that 11. And that's where we got it wrong last, last year. Bringing in Lewis Hall, Tino, you know he's brilliant tonight. Well, you're brilliant. He's good and he's a brilliant talent. Um, but, you know, all that money that was spent on those to not start not playing. Tino only played because Trippier's injured. You know, it's a bit mind-boggling, really, that window last year, the money was spent. Harvey Barnes, yes, he's been injured, but again, left wing when we needed a right winger. Uh, we need striker this year. And like you say, we need to replace these players. That are playing week in, week out. And the first one for me has to be Longstaff, the very first one. Because, to be fair, you hope Lewis Hall improves and then he can come in at left-back or Trippier can continue playing right-back, Tino can come in at left-back, whatever. But, uh, aye, we can't be having... Being a Longstaff starting from this summer, and if they are, it's going to be a long old slog yet again. Longstaff will get Eddie the sack. Centre-backs both shake the way. Shaw as well. Listen, Shaw's at fault. For Mudrick, we've talked about how bad Botman was tonight, but Shaw as well. You know, Shaw, he gets done by Mudrick. Mudrick, man. 
the only team he looks worth anywhere near his price tag is when he fucking plays against us. We're missing Joe Linton so badly. We sure are. Still not an excuse, though, for me. There's no European players for us, says Nina. Well, uh, I, I disagree. Listen, we would have went seventh and eight if we won. It's still very tight around there. It'll probably be Conference League if we're, if we're lucky, like, or unlucky. Let us know with you. Would rather have Conference League or not? Uh, Wally Willick tonight, totally anonymous. Uh, how is on thin ice, Mahmoud? It's nearly 1,000 people watching, so shout out to everyone that's watching live. I hope you just can uh, just give it a quick like and subscribe to the channel because there's people like Annie there are new to the channel. So please do subscribe if you haven't already. How needs to go, says Pesh. Poor tactics, game management, player management, terrible management of Newcastle. Pesh isn't happy. And I don't blame him because that is fucking crap tonight, like really bad. But the the thing that winds me up is just when you do think, when you do think you we're back. Because against Wolves, I thought, right, we're sorted now. We're playing our style of play again. The intensity is there. The press is there. The consistency isn't there, though. Nine days later, we're going to play like that. <sighs> Loads of people to Slate and Botman. Uh, <laughs> very good point, Daniel. I'll take Sean to Canada so we can join up with Matty as well. I'll tell you what, I'll take him this. I'll take him tomorrow. I'll tell Hapley, drive Sean to the airport tomorrow. I'll get in a fight with him. To be fair, I'll go on holiday to Canada for a couple of weeks, drop them off, and I'll come back. But Sean won't. Sean can stay over there. Longstaff Brothers out in Canada playing fucking ice hockey. And that, to be fair, well done, Matty. I think you got an assist on his debut the other day, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind Longstaff. Joining the other long staff, Matty, in Canada. Well, I just think you're a bit stupid, to be honest. If you if you're coming out and defending that performance tonight, you're just naive. I mean, it's just, just blinded, total tune, black and white goggles on. If you can defend that tonight, and if you just Sticking up for players because the Geordies. I love the fact we've got Geordies in the team. I love the fact that one of our brightest talents is Louis Miley and he's a Geordie. And my favourite player ever, like many of you, is, is a Geordie in Alan Shearer. But we can't just go around having Geordies in the team just for the crack when you want to be, um, you know, top four, top six team. Like these owners have said. They said they want to be number one. Can't just be playing Geordies because the fucking Geordies. You know what I mean? Yes, if you get there on merit, fantastic. Like Maley's done, really. Um, but I, you can't just be like, oh well, we'll keep being it. Well, keep good old being eh? eh? He's funny and he's got three fingers and he's seven foot tall. We'll keep Dan Bain in because he's Geordie. Oh. We'll keep Sean in because he's from Shields, loves the place, doesn't he? Yeah? Has a sausage roll every day from Greg's. Ah, oh, he's quality man, isn't he? He is Sean. No, 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 not anymore. Not anymore. It's not Brucey now. It's not Ashley. Where you have your, your, your Geordies and the team and your long staffs and all this, your local heroes. Uh, no. Maley's the local hero now. Anderson, hopefully, if he can kick on. But I've seen enough from Longstaff. And I've seen enough from Dan Byrne as well. Captain's on, by the way. I ain't had Dan Byrne. Oh, I won't go into that one. Bottom's getting worse by the match. No pace whatsoever. Uh, long stuff is terrible. Fact how it keeps persisting with them. <sighs> Bournemouth fans told us that how has his favourites. 16 days until the season. I cannot wait. Honestly, I can't wait. I just bring on this summer transfer window, get the changes in, get loads of deadwood out. Oh, man. Southgate's in charge of the Euros, but I've never been so excited for it. Honestly, I just can't wait to just take my new Newcastle top off, put my Ingham one on, watch the Euros and forget about this shite. Forget about this cursed season. Honestly. We will finish 10th at best, says someone there. 
Saint Anton Deck. Well, Saint if you want to, if you want joys, Saint Anton Deck, Saint Me, Saint Sam Fender, you know, whoever else you can name. You know what I mean? Honestly, guys, Jordy Shaw or something. If you want Jordy's, is he even from Newcastle? Probably not. I want the most of them win. Well, he may have been, was he? I don't know. But you know what I mean? If you want Jordy's, just take your pick. Fucking hell. Time for change. Where's the progress? 10th now, but 10th under Rafa six years ago. Ooh. Eddie Howe's tactics needs gone along with the medical staff. Well, I mentioned it if you didn't see it at the start of the video. That fucking physio, man. What is he playing at? When Gordon's telling him that his knee's done in, and he just tells him to lie down and snaps his knee. Ah, that was a smart idea, mate. That was good. Was he the same as physio treating Harvey Barnes and treating uh, fucking all the rest of them this year? It was his idea not to get Botman under the knife and all. And look how that's turned out. Botman's clearly playing at about 25%. Or he's 25% of the bloke he was. 25% of the player he was. Okay, what the hell's happened to him, man? Um... True, like, do you know what I mean? I was meant to be going to that game when it got moved to the Monday night. Scoop had my plans. Um, <laughs> I mean, I went there, Stanford Bridge, to the Caribou Cup game a couple of months ago, and that was obviously a late cut off, and you, you cost you a fortune, man. All those Newcastle fans, that a lot of them obviously come back on the coach and, and drive and stuff, but a lot of them will be paying for hotels tonight in London. You're talking like 300 quid, man. When you put your travel and your ticket and your hotel into that, 300 quid to watch that tonight. Two, three and a quid. Wouldn't want to pay fucking 200 pence to watch that an eighth. Disgrace, really. Refund. Mong staff. Pong staff. <laughs> oh, dear. Marty. I guess that's Matty because everyone does this with the old uh, auto-correct on the iPhone. Are you worried? Oh, no, sorry. How worried are you for Manchester City? Um, Yeah. I was going to use an analogy there. That's probably not suitable so i'll just say very fucking worried about as much as what you can be worried to be honest and i'm still raging at the cup draw but to be honest after watching that tonight are we going to win a cup the way we're playing at the minute and with what, our game plans and tactics and the players that are there no so does it i'm maybe not as bothered now because i just think to myself as soon as we come up again so yes obviously semi-final would have been great being back down at wembley box park and if we had got a good draw, which we know I wouldn't have because we never get good cup draws. But now you think, oh, well, Man City just, just put us out of our misery, just knock out the cup. And then, you know, we're one step close out of this season, finally being over. Because to be fair, if we get Man City in an FA Cup final, we're not going to beat them, are we? We're not going to beat Man City. We're not going to be anyone in the final. We can never win at fucking Wembley. New or old. So, yeah, uh, I'm going off on one now, aren't I? Dylan, I'm uh, I'm very very worried about Manchester City because I'm very very worried that it could turn into an absolute annihilation in supreme embarrassment because if three goals are conceded against that Chelsea team tonight, that are eleventh and have been woeful for a year in a bit now, then uh, all right, we've got Mudrick scoring against her again. How we're we gonna fare with Erling Haaland, with Bernardo Silva, with Phil Foden? with Kevin De Bruyne, with everybody else. The list could go on and on. They could make five changes. Man City on Saturday, and they'll still score five past us. So I hope that answered your question. Very worried. I was reached his limit. There we go. He got the, got the, got the tight rule right. Thanks, Dylan. I knew what you meant, though, mate. Uh... It does indeed. Said it earlier. There's times where you think you'd be better off with bloody 10 men. The way long stuff is playing. <laughs> Rolls Royce to a tuk tuk. Sven Botman. I was calling him Sven Bossman last year. Now it's Sven Boomsong. Rolls Royce to an MG Rover. Tuk tuk. Oh, God. Uh... 
Totally predictable subs again from Longstaff. See Shauna, guaranteed starters every week. Absolutely. Exactly. Well, definitely. I mean, these, these Geordies are on, what, 40, 50, 60, 70 grand a week. I'll do for five. Knee bother. And can everyone back me because I'm from War's End, because I'm a Geordie? Can we all get the hey, mate, am I all right to just run about that and do a long stuff? Anybody can do a long stuff. Looking busy. Look, I did that normie jobs in the past. Jimmy looking busy. Pretending. Faking it. Skiving. That's what it's doing. Run about, saying to say, up and down, oh, sweating, oh, blaze one over the bar. Ah, oh, shit, sorry, I'm Jordy. Yeah, wouldn't mind playing at all. <sighs> Good comment from Matthew there. That's a really good, I should have said that actually, Reliant Robin's better than the rule of our reference I was using. Rules Royce to Reliant Robin. Three wheeler. Lake Burns, three fingers. Mm, strange game looked dross against a pile of shit. <laughs> we did. And that's the thing, you know. Listen, there's many a times that I've watched Newcastle at Chelsea and just thought, yeah, this is going to be a hammer today. Yep. Yeah, no, we're going to get beat. Yep. Yeah, deserves that. Yep. Yeah, cool. Chelsea are great. I mean, spent loads of money, class, Mourinho, wicked, Ancelotti, whatever, mint. Change the manager every year, still win everything, mint. But, you know, when you see Chelsea this year, you just think they are a pile of shit. All the fans will tell you that. And yet we still perform it out against them and just gift them the game. That's the thing that winds me up. Ooh, Man City will be a massacre. Irish Bears starting to lose patience in how big time. We finished bottom half. I think you may be gone. Fucking imagine finishing bottom half, man. I'm still thinking we can get Europe. But you're so right, we could still finish bottom half. Next game, we could be bottom half. I think I said if we lose and Chelsea win. Everyone's off the pace. Dan Byrne, Botman and everything. Vin and Anita that's better than long staff. Uh, you're not wrong there, like. Why did we ever let Miguel Marino go? Fuck man, could do with him back, couldn't we? We kept the wrong long staff, says G Shield. <clears throat> Taxi for house, says Paul. Tino was classy as Kevin. Yeah, the only bright spark for me was Tino. But again, I just think decision making could have been better at times in the final third, but he was looking live, looking good, and really good at drawing fouls. Ray, let me try and get caught up because I'm still on comments from 20 past 10 and it's now 54 minutes past. <laughs> Been going nearly 50 minutes here and there's still over 800 people watching. So please do uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Um, passengers, Geordie passengers. Go northeast. Well, that's a scary thought, to be honest. Like, if, that, I, 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 if you did that, then that would be very dangerous, to be fair. Um, I don't know, we did dodge a bullet with Phillips, man, doesn't he? He's been awful for West Ham. Shooting ratio is horrible. See, it's Kevin, it is like so many times where you think, you know, have a pop, man. Sack the physio, see, it's Fruit Ninja. See, sack all the medical staff after what we've done this season. Russian players back, not. Not uh, sorting out players' injuries properly, you know. We've been uh, awful, really. Look at Botman. Look at the decision not to have Bones's surgery. And then, oh, not good. Not good at all. People are calling for Mourinho. Eddie's late subs. Shocking. More Mourinho comments.
Criminal Longstaff's getting the full 90 minutes again. It's fucking mad as out how this bloke starts every week and then continues to just play every minute. Absolutely mental. Yus Mourinho would sign to some players. Shout out there, uh, Los Blancos fan there. Oh, flying through some of these comments now. I've only played well in four games this season, says Keith. Probably not far off that, to be honest. We'll have to look back and uh, do that. Jacob Murphy is shooting McGovern personified. Big fan of shooting McGovern, me. Big fan of the old Happy Gilmore. Make them do laps around the town, moi. See his hoofs line. Fucking town, moi. Through the full town. Through the full northeast. Laps to the stadium of Scheidenbach. That's what it should be doing. Keep getting questions like this from other mainstream outlets and stuff with Darren there saying, Mark Hughes started the Man City revolution, but was no pep. We need our pep to take us forward. Eddie has done well, but it's time to move on up. That's what so many other fans say to me all the time, you know. So many. For the first time, I'm doubting Eddie. How was out of credit over draft limit exceeded? Clueless. Longy should have been pulled at half time. <clears throat> De Bruyne, Ford and Cole laughing their head off. Can't wait for our midfield. Oh, God, oh, mate. that midfield coming up against Man City's midfield is petrifying, isn't it? Absolutely petrifying. Was last season a dream, says Peter. It fucking feels that way because this season's a nightmare. I think Isaac could get snapped up, says Jack. Well, everyone's ranting and raving about him, aren't they? Jamie Carragher at half time was saying, Oh, I love this bloke, me. And when everyone sees finishes like that, and even though there's tuning the highlights, he'll have more than enough admirers. Matty for mine just says, I'll need another score. I'll take the job. <laughs> I'm a jolly, so I get plenty of time, wouldn't I? I couldn't do a thing wrong. <clears throat> How much can we get for long stuff? Seriously. Five million? You would you would try and push for probably 15 or something, 20 max, but seriously? Seven and a half? I, I don't know. Like. Not much. Not much at all. How long is Gordon out for? See, is Jonathan? We don't know yet. Well, I don't know yet. I don't know if how spoken on it. Uh, let's have a quick look. To be fair, we'll have a quick look. See if anyhow has said anything. Um. Anyhow, has said on Anthony Gordon. We fear it's not looking too good. He's in a lot of pain. But it's early days. It was a knee problem that came on gradually. So I tell you what, if he's out for the season now, that's how our season done. We'll be finishing bottom half, yeah. Wilson's already out for the season. If Gordon's out, we are ruined. Absolutely ruined. Fuck it now, man. Oh man, so yeah, to answer Jonathan there from what Howie said after the game, it's not looking too good for Anthony Gordon. Fuck man, even just for Saturday as well. You're gonna need players like Gordon to try and upset City, aren't you? No, oh, well. Uh, 
Uh, we've got Chelsea fans in the chat saying what I've said all night. You essentially explained Chelsea's season, lad. Low block wins your games versus us. I thought how would have listened, but you did that for the cup and we scored. If you won it, would have had riots at the bridge. So there you go. You've got Paddy there, a Chelsea fan, saying what I've been saying all stream long. Play the low block against Chelsea and you beat Chelsea. So if I can see that, I don't know how Eddie Howe and his coaching staff, who are paid millions of pounds a year, can't see that. Fucking winds me up. I was long staff a professional footballer. Fuck that. You tell me, mate. Honestly. Missing Joe Linton in terrible midfield. That's what a lot of you are saying as well. Yeah. Really miss Joe Linton big time. Thomas took oh breathing right down Eddie's neck. There's an interesting shout, like ex Chelsea manager who sacked from Chelsea. About to lose his job at Bayern Munich. He's leaving this summer, isn't he? Mm -mm. Any half decent team beats Chelsea tonight. Any half decent team has beat Chelsea in the past year and a half, to be honest with you. Plus, so that's the frustrating thing. You know, all these teams that are 15, 16 from the table have beat Chelsea. So it's true, but it's uh, so annoying. Look at Leeds, man. Leeds in the cup a couple of weeks ago could have uh, beat Chelsea. They played well. Where else are we with these comments? Thanks to everyone that has commented tonight. There's been absolutely hundreds of them. Hundreds and hundreds of comments. Uh, would Pope have conceded the first and second goals? Not sure he would have, to be honest. Well, I'm looking forward to Pope coming back. A few more weeks. Burnley for Chelsea. <laughs> so Chelsea... We'll probably finish, go above us in the next round of Premier League games. Class. Class. Lewis Hall has to come in for Man City. It's a free hit. Well, why not? Why not, eh? Because Dan Burns going to get absolutely shafted, as he does most games, but especially against <laughs> fucking Man City. My God. No Europe, Eddie. No job. Be interesting to see what the owners make if, if we did finish bottom half, innit? Um, Longstaff couldn't get on the Mackham's bench. Wow, that's saying something, innit? That is saying something. Eight games in 14, we have conceded three plus goals. That is terrible, innit? News on Joe Linton says, James, well, apparently he's on the verge of signing a four-year contract on 120 grand a week, was it? 140 grand a week? I think it was 120. But I, he's staying, Joe Linton's staying, thankfully. And if only he was fit. Uh, Matty made serious question are you still fully behind how not just based on this game but the whole season obviously I, I, I am I am still behind how um, as much as obviously like I said I've reacted at the performance tonight and, and hammered him rightfully so because he's totally cocked it up I'm still behind how I'm still backing him I just think what he done last year and the year before was unbelievable and I, I, I need to see Longer. If it's this time next year and we're like this, then yeah, get rid probably way before then, to be fair. But for me, Eddie Howe's done an unbelievable job at Newcastle and he deserves more time. He deserves this summer and then see where we're at uh, six months or so into the new season, into the new year. So, because uh, you kind of you forget what he's done. 
already. I don't think you can forget already what he's done. Yes, he's his uh, tactics are questionable at times, especially in this game tonight and in other parts of this season. Yes, we have had an injury crisis, but there's still moments where you just think you can't use that excuse for certain things. And uh, I think we've been very naive at times. And he's, he's, he's got a lot to learn this year, especially coming from the Champions League. We've made some big mistakes. And in certain games like tonight, it's a, it's a huge mistake. It's an absolute howler. Our game plan tonight. And uh, he's not immune from criticism. I will criticise him when I see it fit. But at the same time, I am still backing him. And uh, I don't want him out. I'm not saying that he should be sacked at all. I think uh, I see people's frustrations and I get the point. And it's their opinion. Totally understand it. But for me, I want to see where we're at uh, next season when hopefully we've got some new signings in and we haven't got fucking everyone getting injured all the time. And then we won't have Champions League either. So we won't have that big, uh, big competition to deal with. Right then, I'm just about catching up. I see there is a super chat in there, so I'll get into that in a minute. Thanks for that. Um, some questions here like this is a question for tomorrow night. Remember, we do a podcast uh, every Tuesday night live at 7, so come back tomorrow night, ask that one, because we'll go into depth with things like that. Um, we've got a good hour. I've already been going an hour on this reaction. Bloody hell. Can we hold on to Bruno and ease out without Europe? Just quickly on that. Yes, probably just for now, although I would be worried if an offer did come in because maybe their heads could be turning. Maybe the club would listen to a huge offer for FFP reasons and to reinvest. So I don't know. Like you'd think, you know, they've had a taste for it. They all said they wanted it, especially Bruno in the documentary, seeing Champions League. It's a must. That's what we're on a plane. Maybe give her one year and see how we got on. But, uh, now that they've had an appetizer for it, um, it will annoy them, especially not any form of European football. Because I think you could get away with Europa League. Conference League get a push, probably not. But Europa League, I think, your Bruno is not look at that and think, well, still some top teams in this. Um, and still a chance for winning the trophy, really. If we were in the Europa League for me, we should be one of the favourites. Just that one more. Unfortunately, the white hats are sold out, so you'll have to wait until this winter now to get one of those. But we'll have some caps and that coming out for the summer. Um, I'd love to be able to tell you why Longstaff gets 90 minutes every week. Uh, because it's quite frightening at this point, to be honest with you, why he continues getting all this game time and even stays on the pitch for all that time. Um, mm, mm, let's do another few minutes, people, and then we'll finish off the show. So thanks again, everyone that is locked in tonight and who watches it back. Um, I bring in Diego Simeone. See someone there. Um... I'm just rattling through the comments now, really, because like, we're having to catch up. Uh, Ina, the score, Ricardo. Ina, well, I would have played the low back tonight, so I would have got three points. <laughs> uh, right then, here we are on the super chat from Wesley, so thank you very much for that one. Let the Arabs invest. Newcastle, ten times bigger than City. Wouldn't mind it, mate. That would be lovely. The Arabs are willing to invest. The Premier League just won't let us because of financial fair play. So uh it'd be absolutely lovely to get a bit of investment going and being able to spend all that money we've got. But um at the minute we can't, unfortunately, because of FFP and PSR and all that. But we'll touch on those changes that are coming in tomorrow night's podcast. But hopefully we can spend a bit more money this summer. Well, anything's better than the last window. January didn't spend a penny. So hopefully we can splash some cash this summer. Cheers for the super chat, mate. Um, someone's asked there, what about Hansi Flick? Hansi Flick will be a very good appointment. My new fans want him, don't they? Uh, but again, I'm saying keep how. 
Right then. What else we got in these comments? Last couple of comments, people, before we say no. A couple of others calling for Diego Simeone. Still behind how injuries have been horrific. See what the summer brings and where we are by Christmas. Pretty much what I said, mate, yeah? And then if we are struggling at Christmas... Um, then I would have a think. Terrified on who, how will make waste money on next in a few of those comments tonight. Uh, Talking about, you know, don't trust how with summer spending money. Something else we can touch on in the podcast tomorrow night. But there we go, people. That'll do for tonight's live stream. Went on way longer than expected, but there was that many years tuned in and there was that much good crack in the comments and interactions and everything else. It's flew over. But there it is. Chelsea 3, Newcastle 2. I'm not even going to repeat what I've said all night because it's a waste of time. But it was crap. It was hopeless. And how did they get it wrong? There we go. 7 p.m. Tuesday night, tomorrow night, live for our podcast. So make sure you come back in for that. Get involved in the comments there. We'll have loads of topics to talk through, as always. So cheers to everyone that's tuned in, especially those that send super chats. Really appreciate it. And thank you to everyone that is subscribed to the channel. Please do give it a like if you haven't already. Nice one, everyone. See you later. Take it easy. <laughs>